Hey sixth grade, um, I'm making this video to help you guys out with the classroom practice 80, okay? So today is Monday and um, for your language assignment uh, or activity today, I have for you to read through pages 687 to 690, okay? Um, I encourage you to really read through these to take the time to um, read through the example that's there because there's a lot of really good information that's going to help you, okay? Now, if we were in school, I would do, um, I would probably do this with you anyway, so I'm gonna walk you through it today. And you can either choose to do the classroom practice um, today, which is Monday, or you can do the classroom practice when it is assigned tomorrow, okay? Either way is fine, but um, you are more than welcome to grab that and um, work through it with me while you're watching the video, okay? Um, we are doing another outline. The difference now is we are going to um, outline from an article, okay? So we have an introduction paragraph, we have two body paragraphs, and we have a conclusion paragraph, okay? Um, some things that I'd like you to remember are uh, your main points we put in Roman numerals, your subtopics are in the capital letters, and your uh, details then are with Arabic numbers, uh, like one, two, three, okay? Um, your article is over the North American grizzly bear. I would like for you, before you begin to do anything, to read through that article. Also, as you are working on the outline, it will help you if you have out your textbook because you'll notice that on page, oh, let me find it here. Um, on page 691, where you have your classroom practice in the actual textbook, you'll notice that it's it's colorful, okay? Um, I believe that the introduction is kind of in a, a brown, maybe, um, as well as the conclusion. And then you'll notice that in the two body paragraphs, you've got some purple, some blue, and some green, okay? And so this is really going to help you um, kind of figure out um, what, you know, pull out those main points, pull out the subtopics and the details, okay? Something else that I'd like you to remember is that for each um, item, we capitalize the first word. We also um, want to make sure that each section is parallel, and I'm going to help you through that, okay? Um, I'm going to do this one example and again, do it with me. And then hopefully the next few that we work through in this chapter, you'll be able to um, do more independently, okay? So the first thing, if you haven't already, pause this video and read through the article, okay? Um, read the introduction and the conclusion, and then uh, to get kind of an idea as to what the article is about, and then go back and read the body, okay? And again, if you do it from page 691 in your textbook, um, pay attention to the way things are color coded there, okay? And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, when we start to outline. So take a moment and do that and then come back, okay? All right. So when you're ready to start outlining, remember that we want our outline to have a title, okay? So you're going to write your outline using pencil. I am going to use, I'm going to write the outline using pen and I'm going to um, use the same color system that they've used just so that you can see uh, the connection between the way things are colored in the, um, the article and the way that we're going to outline it. Okay. So the first thing that I did is I wrote the title um, in red. Okay. Again, you'll write it in pencil, but I have my title. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my main um, 
my main point from the first body paragraph, okay? So if you notice, all right, um, and you might have to look closely because some of the color is kind of hard to see, but if you look closely, you'll see that the word appearance in the second paragraph, but it's the first body paragraph, okay, um, is in a purple. So that is going to be our first main point. So I'm going to skip a line under our uh, title. I'm going to write a Roman numeral, and I'm going to write the word appearance. Okay. So I have this. Let me make sure you guys can see. Okay. Next, what I'm going to do, and typically what you would do um, with an article, and you'll read about this if you haven't already in the textbook, is we would pick out our main points first and then go back and pick out the sub uh, topics and then pick out the details, okay, for each of those um, last. But because this is color coded, I feel like it's easy for us to just go through um, each main point at a time. And so that's the way we're going to do this. But if it wasn't color coded and if you were kind of starting uh, from scratch, you would want to find your main topics first and you would maybe use several different pages and then you'd come together to make your final outline. OK, um, However, they've kind of made it a little bit easy for you, easier for you, and so we're going to work with what we have and just go uh, do the first body paragraph, and then we're going to move on to the second, okay? So um, we've got our first main point, which is appearance, and then if you'll notice the second sentence there, the words name from their unusual fur is in blue. So this is going to be our first subtopic, okay? This is gonna be our capital A. Now, what we want to remember before we just start writing is that we want our sections to be parallel. So however I write this for A, I'm gonna to have to write it the same way for B. So I'm going to go ahead and look and see what other blue subtopics I'm gonna have. The next one is grizzlies can grow to a very large size. And the last one is dangerous animals um, and so the way that I'm going to write this is I'm going to start, uh, my subtopics with verbs. Okay. And so that means my A, B, and C all have to start with verbs. That's what parallel form means. Okay. Um, it can either be all verbs, all nouns, adjectives, prepositions, but you're all, you're starting each of those sections the same way. Okay. Also remember that I don't want an entire sentence. So do not copy the entire sentence for me. I am looking for just a few words or a short phrase here, okay? So I'm going to put my um, capital A and I am going to say that it gets name from unusual fur. So I'm not copying it word for word, I'm just doing a short little phrase on that, okay? So, gets name from unusual Okay. And my blue, it's a very dark blue. I couldn't find more of a royal blue, but hopefully it looks different enough from the purple so you can see the difference, okay? So that's our letter A. Notice I capitalized the word gets, and I did shorten that sentence a little bit, okay? Now, again, because this is color-coded, it's easy for me to pick out the main topic, the subtopic, and the details, okay? So I'm going to look now at the green, which are going to indicate my details under gets name from unusual fur. So you'll notice that there is a green sentence there that says they have brown fur that looks grayish because it has grizzled tips. Now, again, I do not want the entire sentence. We're not writing a sentence outline. OK, so I've got to figure out how to break that sentence up into several different details. 
Okay, because if you remember what you read, if I'm going to have a number one, I have to have a number two. Okay, so I can't just write that whole sentence down under number one anyway. All right, so I'm going to write a number one. And um, so they have brown fur that looks grayish because it has grizzled tips. So I'm going to, again, use verbs to start all of this with. So I'm going to say has brown fur first. Okay, and that's going to be uh, my number one, my Arabic number one. My number two, I'm going to say looks grayish. Since I have a verb for number one, I have to have a verb starting it for number two. So looks grayish is number two. And then my number three is going to be has grizzled tips. And I am capitalizing um, those first words for each of those. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like. Okay, so that is everything under my capital A. Now, my next um, subtopic, okay, my capital letter B, is going to be um, the next blue thing there. Grizzlies can grow to a very large size. <clears throat> well, for A, I started that one off with a verb, so I've got to start my B off with a verb as well. And so I'm just going to say can grow to very to a very large size okay can grow to very large size okay so this is my capital B okay now if you'll look under that sentence there are two green um, phrases or sentences, which we are gonna use as our details. Can reach between five and eight feet tall, and then can weigh from 800 to 1,000 pounds. Now, I am gonna start this one with uh, the preposition from. So I'm gonna say from five to eight feet tall, uh, for my Arabic number one, and I'm going to say for my number two, from 800, well, I guess I could do, to 1,000 pounds, okay? So my capital letter B is going to look like this. And notice that I am, uh, it may not be perfect, but I am trying to line things up, okay? My, a, my B should be under my A, my Arabic numbers should all be lining up. So try to get that as, as close as possible, okay? So next, I have my uh, capital letter C, okay? And um, we have dangerous animals. Now, my capital A starts with the verb gets. My capital B starts with the verb can. So I have to put a verb in front of the word dangerous. So you could say um, are dangerous animals. Okay. So this is my letter C. Now, look underneath that, and we have um, we have a green sentence, okay? Well, it, so it says, uh, powerful build, fast speed, and unpredictable behavior. So each of those starts with an adjective, and so that's fine. I can keep those as is. It's just each section, okay? So if you, if you notice under my A, my one, two, three, they all started with verbs, okay? Because that's one section. So they all needed to start the same. 
Under my B though, I started those, my number one and two, with prepositions because they're one section. They all need to be the same, all right? So it's not that all of your Arabic numbers throughout the whole outline have to be parallel, just within each section, okay? And I hope that that makes sense. Um, so your capital C are dangerous animals. I am going to have first my Arabic number one, and I'm going to say powerful, powerful build, okay? For my number two, I'm going to say fast speed. Oops, that S looked a little capital, sorry. And for my number three, I'm going to say unpredictable behavior. Okay, so it should look like this. Make sure I can... All right, now that finishes the first body paragraph, okay? So next, I'm going to have uh, the second body paragraph, my Roman numeral two, okay? And I'm not gonna skip any lines, I'm just gonna simply write the Roman numeral two, okay? And if you notice, in this paragraph, the purple uh, that's that's um, indicating the main topic of that paragraph is food. So I'm simply going to put food for my Roman numeral two. Okay. Now, since um, this is only a two-body uh, article, we're <coughs> we're excuse me we're done with our Roman numerals, okay? So the next thing that I'm going to do then is look for the, the blue that I have, okay? So it says grizzly bears eat a large variety of plants. Now notice that plants is blue, so that's indicating that that is gonna be uh, one of my main, uh, or I'm sorry, my sub details. So my letter A, and I noticed I got a little bit off there, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to get things lined back up, okay? So my letter A is going to be uh, plants, okay? I think I made my Roman numeral too smaller, so that kind of threw everything off, but I tried to line that A back up with all my other capital letters, okay? So we have letter, capital A, plants. Next, um, you'll notice that then they give examples of plants, okay? Nuts, berries, mushrooms, vegetation, and roots. Again, I'm not writing all of that on one line, okay? Because they're all different, I'm going to make them each a separate detail. So, number one would be nuts. Number two would be berries. And I'm just going to list them like that as nouns. That would be, um, there's no need to add anything else to or in front of that. Uh, number three would be mushrooms. Number four would be vegetation. And number five would be roots. Okay, so this is what that should look like. Okay, now, my, if you notice, then those are, those are the only details we have, okay? They're the only things that are green. So that means my, <clears throat> the rest of my outline are going to be capital letters for subtopics, okay? The last sentence is, they also eat insect, fish, and other animals. So again, I'm not putting that in one sentence, okay? I'm going to break it up into separate words and, or phrases. And I think I can do this very easily with nouns by just saying insects, fish, and animals, okay? I'm not gonna put other animals because then that's adding an adjective and it's not parallel form anymore, okay? So my capital B is going to be insects. My capital C is going to be fish. And my capital D is going to be animals, all right? Now, um, that is all for the second um, body paragraph. 
and we do not um, we do not need to include the introduction or conclusion in our outline. So here is the end of that. Okay, now I'm going to try to back away, and I know it might be a little bit blurry, but you can see how everything's lined up. You can see um, as best as it can. I encourage you to try to do the best that you can do, okay? Um, I hope that this helped. It's, you know, when you look in the book and it's giving you those, those colors, um, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of pull out. It takes the guesswork out of what's the main topic, what's the subtopic, what's the detail. What I really want you to focus on then is making sure that you are having each section in parallel form, okay, and that you are not giving me these long sentences, okay, um, that you're giving me just words or short phrases, all right? Um, I think if you worked through this with me, then the next one we do should be even easier. But if you do have questions over those, because I'm probably not going to make a video over that next one, okay? Um, just remember that they're color coded, and I'm I'm pretty sure. Let me double check here. Um, oh well, actually, the next classroom practice you have is going to go back to the little sticky notes where it's going to tell you the main point, the subtopics, and the details. Um, and we're gonna actually have sub details on that one. So make sure you're paying attention and you're reading um, in your textbook before you just jump into that, okay? Um, but the next time you do an outline from an article, the colors stay the same. Anything in purple are your, uh, your main points. Anything in blue are your subtopics. Anything in green are your details. And because we're doing sub details now, you're gonna look for that color orange, okay, is gonna be your sub details. All right, so take your time through these, okay? Um, my suggestion would be, again, to read through the article first so you see how things fit together and you can kind of get that uh, sense of the parallelism in your mind before you start writing because you don't want to start erasing a whole bunch, realizing that you didn't uh, follow that parallel form, okay? Because I am looking for that and I am taking off if you do not um, have things written in parallel. I am docking your points if you um, are not capitalizing the first word uh, in, you know, for each item or each section. So um, make sure that you're paying attention to the rules. And I know that it's not fun and, you know, extremely exciting to read through that textbook, but if you take the time to do that, okay, then all of this is going to make so much more sense, all right? So please do that. I've tried to break it up to where you're, you're you know, maybe reading one day and doing the activity manual page the next day. Um, like today is Monday, you're, you're reading through the examples, you're reading through all that information in the book, and I technically haven't assigned the classroom practice until Tuesday, okay? Um, for Wednesday, again, I have you looking through the book, looking at the references there, um, going over <clears throat> parallel form again, and then it's not until um, Thursday that I have you do classroom practice 81, okay? Um, and then Friday, I do have you doing classroom practice 82, um, and that's only because it's it's another article, okay? And so if you review if you review the pages that you've done uh, this week in uh, in the textbook, then that should you know that should be uh, very doable for you. Um, okay, one more thing that I realized I had made a mistake on, and it's not language, but it's literature. Somehow on Thursday, I did not put a reading assignment for you guys. And I just wanted you to know that you don't have a specific assignment, but your assignment for this week in literature is to read chapter six, get that completely read, and you need to finish that packet that I gave you, okay? If you're having a tough time with the vocabulary building uh, activity, the very first thing um, in the packet, I did send a text to your parents, so make sure that they show you that or that you look at that um, so that 
it will uh, help you and hopefully that will make sense, okay? Um, keep working hard. We're, we're almost done. This is going to be your last week of vocabulary. Um, and then I notice that I've shortened the spelling assignments a little bit because these are words that you've had from vocabulary. So I'm not worrying about definitions. Um, hang in there. We're almost at the end. Keep working hard. Okay. You guys take care.